how you rip and tear, sometimes nipping the ends off your fingers. Lay it flat and pull it lightly towards you over the cabbage. The weight of the knife across the cabbage is all that's necessary. Why, ladies, when you get slaw cut as fine as this, you'll certainly appreciate eating it. The crowning feature of the set is the cutter that I'm going to show you now. This is known as the Champion Vegetable Mincing Knife and Noodle Cutter. Now, when you want to make some real fine noodles at home, you roll the dough out like this. Dip this into a little flour so it doesn't stick to the dough, and as you roll it over the dough, that will cut the noodles in long strips ten at a time. Did you ever try to chop up the little nuts for cake? Well, I've seen ladies chop nuts and the nuts land up on the ceiling. Sometimes you chop the ends off your fingers. When you want to chop up a little nuts for cake, cooked meat, clams for chowder, soup greens to throw into your soup, making a little pepper or chicken hash is just a few strokes rolling it up and down. Why, here is without a doubt the meanest thing in the world to cut parsley. Put that in a grinder, you really grind it too fine. This machine, instead of crushing the parsley, cuts it quick, clean, and dry, leaving every bit of the juice and every bit of the flavor. Now, to clean this machine, you press the button. Rinse it out in a little water. When you're through using it, hang it up and let it dry. Here's one here that every lady should have in her home known as the Parisian scoop. You lay it flat, once to the right, once to the left. When you scoop them out, you'll get a perfect round little ball. You can pot roast these, cut them out of cheese or cut them out of butter. When you're serving a fruit cocktail in the summertime, take your fresh cantaloupe, scoop them out like this, Mix them with apples, pears, and watermelons. Makes a delicious fruit cocktail served with a little cracked ice like you see here. But here are the two ladies. If you ever do get it, you'll thank the day you've seen this demonstration. When you press, it locks. It's like a pair of human hands. Reach in the oven and take the biscuits out of the oven. Ever take the hot potatoes out of the oven and burn yourself on the elbow? A roast chicken out of the oven, a piece of meat out of the pot, spinach, asparagus out of the water, why around canning season when you're preserving the fruits, to take the hot fruit jars out of the water like that, that machine is worth dollars to you. And here's another one that I really know you'll enjoy having in your kitchen, known as the safety grader. No doubt you're familiar with the old-fashioned grater. I've seen ladies take a grater and rip the knuckles off. When you want to grate up potatoes for delicious potato pancakes, this has a smooth, flat edge, impossible to cut yourself. Just like you were washing clothes, you rub it up and down, and you really grate your vegetables real fine, retaining all the flavors and all the juices. Bread crumbs for your for when you're serving veal cutlets or anything like that. You want a little bread crumbs to fry your fish in? Well, there's the greatest proposition in the world. Use that for coconut, cheese, or horse ready. When you're through with it, just hit it down like that. That knocks all the food out. Rinse it out in a little water and hang it up and let it dry. Now, here is a stone made of carborundum and sapphire quartz which is made purposely to keep these knives sharp. When they get dull, a few strokes over the edge like this, and you can put a keen cutting edge on it. If you have a dull knife or a dull pair of scissors, an old sickle or a sigh, a lawnmower, cleaver, an axe, there's a tool that will really put an edge on the knife so the knife will really cut for you. I just want to give you an idea of how sharp that knife really is when you sharpen it with that stone. Ladies, I've seen some of you try to open up cans. Now, there's a can of Campbell's baked beans. I've seen ladies open up a can and you poke a hole in it, go round the top, hippity hop, and your finger slips. Let me show you a real proposition. Look, lay it on the can, lift up the safety, and turn the key. That locks itself on the can, no harder than you were winding up your watch. 
wind up the key and that'll cut the top off of the can slick and smooth. Notice how the end raises itself up in the air so you can lift the lid off, giving you a clean, smooth edge. Now that can be used for sardine cans, square cans or round cans, exactly the same way. Now this tool here, my dear friends, needs no introduction. This will save you on an average of 20 to $30 every year you use it as a peeling knife. Here's a grater for cheese, coconut, or horseradish, a fish scaler for scaling your fish, and when you're coring your apple, it's just a slight twist of the wrist, and there's the apple core. There's one more tool that I want you to see, and I want you to watch this one very closely. Many a times when you're baking a pie, you have a pudding in the oven. I've seen ladies wrap a towel around your hand, and many a times you burn your fingers. Hook this onto the pot like this and lift the hot pots off the top of the stove. You've got a pie pan in the oven? Get a hold of the pie pan like this Why you couldn't get it off with a team of horses. This will positively lift 100 pounds. There's a pail of water weighs 50 or 60 pounds. That's the way you pick it up. But there's one more tool. I'll be all through and I'll be finished. Oh, now the next tool and the last one is what they call the Sarah Bernhardt Cutter. This was invented by the head chef of the Imperial Hotel in the city of Berlin, Germany. You place the screw into the center of the vegetable. Twist the vegetable until the threads catch a hold, then you wind this up. You keep winding until you utilize the whole potato. The faster you turn, the quicker the slices. Why, ladies, here's a machine for slicing onions. The first onion that you slice with this cutter, you bless the day, you've got a hold of it. Every slice cut exactly the same thickness. Every slice cut the same size. In making what they call a rosette, pull the vegetable out like this. Pin the ends together with a toothpick. Drop that potato into the hot fat and fry it. That will come out like a donut golden brown. If you're serving a nice fish dinner, a little parsley goes in the center with the fish all around it. Makes a very appetizing dish. Did you ever try to slice onions with a knife? You know how you get one thick slice and one thin slice? Run the knife through the center. That will separate each slice individual. Almost like magic, there is every slice cut exactly the same thickness and the same size. Wouldn't you like to have a set like this in your kitchen? Why, of course you would. Now, don't forget, attend this theater every week and receive this 12-piece fascinating Ladies and gentlemen, the management of this theater takes great pleasure in making this announcement. To each lady attending this theater each week, you'll receive absolutely free a fascinating 12-piece kitchen cutlery set, one piece each time. It is really interesting and amazing to know how you can prepare your meals in an appetizing and pleasing manner. There's an old saying, and a true one, that what is pleasing to the eye is bound to be pleasing to the appetite. I'm going to demonstrate this set to you, and I want you to watch it very closely. The first cutter that I'm going to show you, now this first one is known as the Parisian cutter. Wind it through the potato like a corkscrew. When the cutter appears on the opposite side, pull the cutter out. Place the handle in the center and twist it out. This is what they call a French curl. When you fry these, they come out like donuts, nice and brown. Serve them with your steaks or pot roast them. Unwind it, there's two curls out of the one potato. Tomorrow morning for breakfast, Wind a little strip of bacon around the potato and serve them with bacon and eggs. They're delicious. 
different colored vegetables, wind them together, and you get the two colors. Here's a little trick cut. Split the curl halfway through the center. If you're making a shrimp salad and you happen to run short of shrimp, mix these in with the regular shrimp. On my word, you couldn't tell the difference until you start to eat them. Now the rest of the potato, you stuff it. We'll call this a little chicken. We'll call this here some hamburger. You might have a little meat that's been laying in the ice box for a few days. Chop the meat up fine, season it highly, stuff it into the center of the potato and bake them with the skins on. When they're done, cut them in two. Serve them on the half shell just like that. Serve them in slices when company calls. The more company you have, the thinner you cut the slices. If your mother-in-law calls, give her a beak piece like that. Now the second tool in the set is known as the garnishing knife. Everything you cut with this must come out fancy. Watch this, please. You cut down, you turn the potato, and then you cut through the edge. First one way, and then the other. Sweet potatoes cut like this. Drop them into a little batter of pancake flour and fry them. When they're golden brown, sprinkle molasses on them. Serve them with strips of bacon for breakfast while they're delicious. Here's beets, you pickle them, and carrots, you steam or cream them. In making the original French fried potato, cut them in thick slices. Put them one on top of each other, cross cut the slices, and you'll never eat a French fry any other way. The potato cut like this will not absorb the fat because they're garnished around. Pineapples cut for your pineapple and cheese salad, cut them the same way. Here is one, and this is a dandy. Cuts any thickness or any size. Open it for a thick slice, close to the top for a thin slice. Saratoga chips, you can make them for three or four pennies a pound. Just pull the blade towards you like this. If you want the slices thicker than this, open the blade, there's a thick slice. Shoe strings for your Friday fish dinner, cut them down like this. Chop them up for your vegetable soup. What this knife is really intended for is for cutting the cabbage. You know the old-fashioned board, how you rip and tear sometime. Hello, everyone. How we doing this evening? Uh, going to be doing all sorts of fun stuff tonight, uh, although... Uh, my, my mixer friends may uh, have seen me some do some of this before, <laughs> but we have pork, um, some more pork, and for the people that are here because of Twitter, we have beans. Gobbles, that's uh, available. It's uh, owned by the Smithsonian here in the U.S. Uh, it's a public domain video. I always forget the name of it, but it, it's at the start of it. So if you catch the VOD, it's only like nine, ten minutes long, somewhere in there. It should be on the VOD. Or actually, if you look at one of my previous VODs, it should be on my previous ones, too. Alright, so, giving our uh, kidney beans a good rinse off here after sitting in water after uh, 24 hours here. And so, going to add some fresh water and a little bit of stock. water to cover and then stock for flavor. Thank you, Kirby. Thank you, thank you, thank you.
And this is uh, the pork stock that I made, not the chicken stock. And just whatever I already defrosted there for flavor. The rest of this is going to go in with the pork. So I'll start those. Oops. Need the hawk in there too. <laughs> Ooh, lovely. It's got a nice little cut in it already for me. I could have used this in two different dishes here. But uh, since I've already got it defrosted, I don't have immediate plans. It's all going in there. Actually, let's do the stove. There we go. So, this is a little water in the bottom of this pan over here. So, now that we have flame on our pork and beans. These are going to be simmering here for better part of two hours. Uh, tonight's dinner is going to take at least two hours. Uh, the pork is probably going to take in the ballpark of two hours to cook. The beans and hock are going to take in the ballpark of one to two hours to cook depending on how long it takes the beans to uh, essentially break down. And, uh, yeah, then we get into salsa and all sorts of other fun stuff, making uh, tortilla dough. Uh, gonna cube up pork meat. actual skin there even though this hog was mostly skinned already for me yeah maybe should have put that somewhere else oh well so we got quite a bit of fat and muscle here Not very fancy cubes, but it'll get the job done. Sorry about that hug. You're welcome here every Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. Just a little bit much. Uh, let's get these guys.
<laughs> Maybe one day. Then can still handle the public. Let's see what we got here in the center. This looks like a thin piece of muscle here with a whole bunch of fat. But... I'll leave some on there obviously for flavor, but don't need all that. <laughs> oh, sorry, that one's broken. That one didn't make the conversion. How's everyone doing this evening? Is everyone doing all right? Uh, how how'd every turn everything turn out for you, Kirby? There, I had to leave. Around three-ish or so. I think you were getting into trees when I was last seeing what you were up to earlier. Your stream. And thank you for the raid. I typed it, but didn't say it. And thank you for the sub. Oh, that's good. That's good. Doesn't make for great content, but but nice. Some of these guys are still a little bit large. All right. So I'm going to start searing this off on the stove. for wear and it's not like it, it looked poor on on your ability to do what you were doing and you can render this out I've got so much already rendered out fat that this is just going to go in the compost. I am doing quite lovely today. 
apologize for not reading that earlier. Yo, thank you for the sub. Thank you, thank you, thank you. How are you doing this evening? I'm still working on my alerts here, guys. <laughs> so, I'd like to do a little bit more for, for things, but... Getting things working first. Guess what, chicken butt? Okay, that pan is smelling warm enough to me. I'm going to turn the heat down on the beans here so that we're just at barely a boil. Got a little oil to get ourselves started off in the larger pot. Cleaning up this board here real quick while that continues to sear. We get all that pork seared off nice and brown and yummy looking. And then we'll add it in some veggies and uh, stock into the party. And just let that roll for a little while. Just glancing and seeing my dinner command fly by, I am thinking I should open up a bottle of beer. Pliny the Elder, which is one of the more famous beers out there. Awesome. I thought so too. For those wandering very silly hats is the man responsible for all those emotes and my badges and everything. He is a lovely art stream you guys should check out.
ですね bedroom door here so I don't get any smoke alarms going off. Very, uh, if you aren't familiar with this, it's only uh, very, very, very limited distribution outside of Northern California here, but it is one of the famous microbrews. It is sort of the IPA that sort of started the IPA craze, even though it's a double IPA. Um, it is not what you would expect from a normal beer. You do get all of the beer notes to it, but it is just so floral, so uh, hoppy uh, that lovely stuff. It takes a lot of time to break down a lot of meats and stuff like that. Um, but I've always been a big fan of braising and doing slow cooking methods and making stock and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's, you'll see a lot more of that here than you, you typically really even want in a normal kitchen. And there's some steaks I might, I might be okay with them moving back at me. going to take a plate here and we got some decent color on all of this. Let's we'll start in with our second batch of meat here. This darker ring here is obviously the harder, hotter parts of the pan, and it's also the hotter side of the burner from my experience. And so I'm obviously starting over there with the meat to cool that down first. Then I'm working my way to the other side. This is spattering a little bit. It isn't exactly comfortable to leave my hand down there. Sorry, I can't see chat right now. Uh, can't read it when I'm facing the stove here. <laughs> Let's see. 
I even think that I'm impatient with things because there are things that I skip and I tell people that I'm skipping them that would make a better product. Um, and if I'm sitting here doing it, essentially a show, even though it's me just cooking dinner, Yeah, that's something I would have done 10 years ago myself, even though I was, had gone to culinary school and... Pretty sure that I earned this. Yeah, a lot of people don't have the time to deal with food in an old school method. It's just the way life is nowadays. Uh, I mean, the, the restaurant industry has been dying my entire lifetime uh, to take out delivery fast food yep 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 I still have a microwave. I basically use it for warming up butter and uh, I don't make popcorn at home really at all. Um, tempering chocolate. Microwaves are great for tempering chocolate. Yeah, Midget, that's uh, sadly, a, a, at least where I am, it's a condition of the real estate around here. Um, a restaurant should be operating on about 10% or less of their uh, earnings per month going to their rent. And if you're paying ridiculous amounts of rent I mean even just a small little coffee house place which I've crossed out several times you know I'm looking at six seven eight grand a month for a coffee house space that um, that means 50 60 70 80 grand in sales a month out of a coffee house uh, and that's without the fact that labor is increasing, increasing, and... Uh, 
and now we have with this restaurant with what's happened here with COVID, you have all of these restaurants being shut down and they're going to uh, delivery. But they're now going to be going to delivery and being one concept in delivery and competing against uh, these ghost kitchens that are now a big deal and being set up by uh, the former creator of Uber um, to be large kitchens that do, you know, like five or six different uh, places online, but you don't realize it's all coming from the same place. Effectiveness, like I was saying, it's real estate and labor. Um, and I, I sort of think it's probably the hotels that are going to take it over because all these hotels have half empty board uh, cooks sitting in their uh, room service kitchens. Internationally, I don't really know. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here in the U.S., it's um, a good way to test out a concept, but it's not a way to really start a successful business, in my opinion. Uh, what we had here in the U.S. was a huge boom with uh, Koji. And the reason Koji blew up, blew up is because they were working in long with their... Night Tom, thanks for stopping by. Hope you have a great evening. Uh, if you guys don't know Tom, Tom is also a creative drug drawing streamer here. Go and give him a check out. And I completely lost my train of thought of where I was. Uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, Koji Truck. Um, they were working in, in cahoots essentially. They were partnered with road stoves which road stoves was in the business of they were the first major company to start wrapping their taco trucks with uh, designs on the outside of them and they were renting the trucks out and so basically you know they could just rent out the truck to another person if they didn't make it and change the wrap Cut the heat on that now. And so you had a boom of that, but at the same time, here in the US, it's such a racket. And I say that as a person who has a mobile kitchen. <laughs> uh, in the US, at least here in California, there are states that are much more lenient and it's a much better situation. Um, but here in California, you're required to keep it in a county approved. Uh, commissary or a county approved uh, location with like grease traps outdoor um, with sloped concrete and stuff like that to handle drainage and proper cleaning and all that lovely stuff um, and then you're at the commissary and you're legally required to be at this commissary in most people's cases because most people 
cases they don't have the money to build out that uh, space for a concept. Um, you're there, you're paying, then paying them for your, you know, your water, your electricity, your propane, your uh, snacks and, and drinks since they have them there convenient for you to grab, yada, 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 just all down the line. Distributors love it because they just go to one spot and they're feeding like 20 trucks, which is what we have here in Sonoma. We have one commissary and several locations that are approved. Um, pulling most of this meat off so I can. Uh, let's let's use this lard for our veggies. I gotta chop those still yet though. So we'll let this hang out for a minute. So I have onion in the fridge still. Yep. Absolutely, hats. There's always someone there to uh, want to help collect on your hard work. Just going to quick slice this. sound and a bit and feeling a very dull. But uh, ultimately I think food trucks are um, a big part of our future and our food system here. Uh, I should, going back to that, uh, it's going to make a lot more sense for uh, these companies like especially these companies that can just drop their franchises uh, for them to have a factory pumping out mobile kitchens that go out to the most in-demand locations around it wherever and just be able to repair them and have them then be autonomous and drive back to a place to just be restocked and uh, re-greased, etc. tell you that there is one thing that I occur I've witnessed at a commissary that you will never probably see at a normal restaurant actually I don't even want to say this on stream um, but there, there are very nasty things that can come from dealing with an engine and food
later. Good with that, good with that. Let's get our onions cooking. Turn the oven uh, flame back on the stove here. Still sizzling a little. Picked up some new garlic at the farmer's market, but gonna try and use up the older stuff first. That was actually a decision that I specifically made for my business was um, with taco trucks you are literally tying your business's operation to that engine and uh, that truck and so if any of that breaks down your whole business is out and so uh, I went with a trailer setup that has a generator that I'm relying on but you know in cases I put a generator in the back of my truck And even then, it, it crippled me at times because uh, there was one case where I, I was out of business for about two weeks because my generator broke down. Uh, because I was using a pretty hefty generator. Well, it's a lot more expensive in other ways too, other than just the whole basic commissary thing. But in that, that in many cases for these businesses that are tru trucks, they need legal places to work out of too. And so, especially here in California where they have to pay to be at a commissary, they may be paying to be at a commissary, but they may be paying someone else for a prime location to park their truck too. No worries. I don't stream on Tuesday, so. Though that does seem to be a thing here on Twitch. They're, the streamers do seem to like to do Taco Tuesday here.
on fat, midget. Wish I could have a dog or a cat, but I grew up with two cats, but uh, I grew up having two cats and allergic to two cats, and uh, I'm also allergic to dogs, unfortunately. Mildly, not seriously, but enough that them being around the house would be painful. Sorry for hitting that loud. <laughs> uh, so I should probably get making some dough here. Don't know how many I want to make. Don't know. Uh, that I wouldn't know, midget. Let's see here. Find a recipe here for a ratio. Give me some idea of what, how many of these I want to make. Though I would most likely, if it were to ever be a dog that I would adopt, it would be a rescue. Um, and so, I haven't taken, I don't even know if a hyperallergy, but it's a possibility, but. Um, let's see how many does this make. So, AP flour, gonna do two cups worth. It should give me about 12. So, AP flour. You need to check those onions here soon, too. Rather onions and garlic now. Okay. Those are looking nice and yummy. I think we can add the meat back in here. to that frozen block of pork stock. Yeah. Well, um, I didn't have issues with dogs when I was uh, a kid, but now I very much do. Um,
And then this is my nice premium baking lard out of the, the, the leaf lard out of the center of the pig that I'll be using for this. And we're going to use approximately two tablespoons. Yeah, the three things that I really sort of uh, three things that I really worry about typically are cats, dogs. And coconut. Um, I don't do coconut. You're not going to see me using coconut in any of my food here on stream. Uh, I've, I've even gotten to the point where I've made sure that my shampoos and all my other sort of stuff don't have coconut in them either. But uh, I'll also get affected uh, by seasonal allergies, uh, allergy sort of stuff, and uh, the uh, just making sure all of that lard is well pinched into all of this flour before I add any water. That's interesting. And there are some odd and interesting uh, allergies out there. Um, I feel really sorry for those people that are allergic to chocolate. I'm so sorry. that I've seen or read, I don't know scientifically, of people allergic to other people, people allergic to uh, water, as you were saying. Um, yeah, there's some strange things out there in the world. Why is that staying open? In certain cases, actually in a lot of cases, I would agree with the people that say that um, if only because there are so many things that are, <laughs> you, take lavender, what you think of lavender sold in the store if you buy dried lavender to uh, sit around your house or something along that line. There's over a thousand varieties of lavender. Um, same thing for tomatoes, for garlic, for anything across the line. And so things have to be treated differently. And so it may be called one thing to you and be two completely different things. That's not saying without allergies or something like that. Allergies are one thing. You you have a negative physical reaction to something, yeah. Um, or if you're in the percentage of people that can't stand 
the cilantro I'm going to be using later. Uh, that's understandable as well. But uh, the people that don't like things because they didn't like the way their mom made it, or um, they didn't like the way their grandma made it, I think those people should give it another shot. <coughs> so, we need to add water to combine. Let's see how much water in the ratio. Three quarters cup. Oh, that was quite a while, Kirby. Not that I was, there's a problem, just. <laughs> I should shut up. So mix this together into the dough, give it a little bit of a knead here, and then let it sit in the fridge before divvying up and rolling out into tortillas. Yep, yep. A lot of those stories, um, but a lot of those stories are also um, the things they were using to make it are completely different from what they are now too. Like uh, I know several of uh, an older generation that buy the same things that they've been buying at the stores for the last 50 years. Say you've been buying cake mix for the last 50 years, regardless of the brand. Um, you may think that that's that same box from that same brand, but they've changed that recipe over probably a hundred times since then. They're now using different preservatives. They're now using safer preservatives, but still preservatives. Um, and in many cases, they're using cheaper corn products for sugar because we subsidize corn. Ooh, I love me a good tuna melt. I actually bought some tuna today. Or rather, I bought it yesterday and picked it up today. Yay, online shopping. Sticky, but still trying to knead this a little bit and still trying to incorporate the last of this flour into there. The, to have a good tuna melt, you have to like experience it in a diner. Maybe at home, but I mean, that's not a uh, bar item. That's not a, actually a lot of food is not bar items. Don't buy food from a bar that, that isn't fried for the most part, in my opinion.
Absolutely, yeah. Things get cheaper and things get more expensive, depending on what they're used for. <laughs> I haven't tried this type of tuna. I bought canned tuna. I typically buy... I typically keep a couple of cans around, but I've got albacore and line caught albacore and olive oil, which I haven't tried this brand or their particular type or their oil packed or any of that. So you can probably expect that featured on a lunch tweet at some point. <laughs> I'm going to throw this in the fridge to relax a little bit. Look at our beans here. Give her pork a little bit of a stir. Seasonings. Uh, let's do paprika, ancho, New Mexico, small bit of cumin, I have whole coriander, I don't have ground coriander. What else do I want to throw in here? A little bit of cayenne. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> hey, sometimes it's worth the drive. The drive is part of the experience sometimes. Uh, that's certainly true at vineyards here. You, you have vineyards here with very long, interesting driveways. Yeah, I'm going to have to do a Monte Cristo at some point, too. I remember that as a kid going. I forget what restaurant I used to get a Monte Cristo at as a kid, but... Used to serve it fried with uh, jelly on the side. Well, Evan Vangeline, if I'm pronouncing that right, uh, I do drink quite a bit of wine here on stream. Ava, uh, as you can see from my rack back here, which I have just recently bought all four of Whole Foods' cheapest wines, so they're they're $3 wines, and so I'm going to go through and uh, in the next probably month or so here, try all four of their different uh, cheapest wines to see if I like or dislike any of those. Um, and the rest there are other uh, supermarket available wines, um, generally in the 10 buck range. Uh, that Rodney Strong there is probably a couple bucks more. So, start with Cayenne. Just a good tap in there. Small pinch of cumin, and a little bit more. New Mexico chili powder, decent amount of this. Pesilla ancho. About the same amount there. I'm really liking this Pesilla Ancho powder that I got from my store. It's the first time I bought it from them. Um, and 
and smoked paprika. Thank you for the follow, Seven. Welcome to my kitchen. And smoked paprika. Yeah, that was a pretty good tweet earlier, Seven. this a stir and allow that to continue to simmer here. Got probably another hour to go on that and probably at least another 30 minutes to go on the beans. Should probably flip that hawk around up. Essentially, Ava, uh, it's a uh, ham and cheese fr deep fried sandwich cut in half. Uh, and in most places that I've seen it served, it's been with some sort of preserve or jelly on the side. Uh, sort of like a uh, light, almost like pancake batter, and uh, often a little powdered sugar involved. Like I said, I had it as a kid. <laughs> Which, I'm actually going to do another attempt at ban banana pancakes. Um, for those of the, that have been following me, Mixer Days, I failed horribly on stupid simple pancakes uh, earlier this year. And so we're going to do another round of banana pancakes and uh, try and do them a little bit uh prettier this time along. Yeah, I tried a really simple pancake of just eggs and of banana eggs and bananas. And it just the the flash point on it was I was too distracted with chat. I wasn't paying enough attention to it. And so it was either undercooked or like burnt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And so I forget when that is, but I have an upcoming dates card down below um, of things that are coming up on stream. Wow, that guy's breaking down nicely. Uh, what else do I have coming up here? I'm going to be doing stuffed cabbage in the near future. Going to be doing, um, actually, let's let's look and see what I'm doing in the near future. But... Sunday, yes. <laughs> yeah, I got a big bunch of bananas with my order today. I was going to do a stuffed cabbage, but I moved that down further for the pancakes because the bananas were going to go. What must you try, Inko? My, my tacos tonight or pancakes in the future? Oh no, the, the bananas are going to be fine for Sunday, but the, I moved up the date for the pancakes because the bananas weren't going to last, is what I was saying, Ava.
Let's make our salsa up. We'll allow that to hang out for a little while here. You got the tomato that I diced up left over from uh, earlier in the week. Let's see, anything else here we need? The parsley. Cilantro, where are thou? Cilantro. Jalapeno is probably in the fridge too. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go more traditional pancake and then add caramelized bananas into the situation. But I've also got uh, a bag of cherries because they were on special. And I've got uh, an apple in the fridge getting up there. And uh, there was something else that I... Oh, I must have not gotten in my order. I think I had blueberries in my order too. so weird. I've, I've almost completely transitioned from almost buying everything from the farmer's markets to uh, placing orders online. <laughs> I'm still going to farmer's markets. I picked those up at the farmer's market and the garlic up at the farmer's market on Wednesday. Oh, wait, we're dicing here. What am I doing? Let's throw this in with the pork. That'll simmer, simmer down in time. Yeah, the, well, I wish there was more sources for uh, onions and garlic. Typically, uh, the local farmers don't find it worth their time financially, unless they're pretty large. Uh, farm doing a whole bunch of stuff. Hey, Outer Force. had much luck with my garden this year either. Um, I had three watermelon plants. Go back into dicing again, into slicing again. Uh, I had three watermelon plants that just completely got ravaged by, I, I think, birds, but maybe something else. Um, my pepper plants are not doing all that hot, although they're alive. Um, I did have my first ox heart, heart carrot. I'll probably throw the photo of that up on Instagram at some point, but it's just a photo of a carrot. Um, that was quite tasty. But uh, first carrot that I've grown here, and ox hearts are, it was a short, fat, like heart-sized carrot. It wasn't a long carrot like you typically think of. I do have some rainbow carrots in my garden that I haven't pulled up yet. Nice otter. How long a walk did you take? probably okay. Um, dill's typically uh, one of the harder herbs to find outside of a commercial 
grow as well because it just bolts in my experience. It just straight up, you know, it starts and then it flowers. And so you, you have such a short period to actually get anything out of the dill plant. It's not one of those plants that's great for just growing in your window and snipping like a thyme or a chive plant. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, you're right. The, the top of a carrot and the dill look rather similar. I do like the smell of dill, too. Some people are not so lo in love with dill, but... Uh, Enjoy making pickles with dill and so we have heirlooms left over from last stream that I refrigerated so they're gonna have less flavor than our good tomatoes that I left out here in the open air and let's add about that much onion Save the rest of that for. Maybe we'll throw it on top of the tacos. Cool. I don't know why I end up grabbing. I don't know what the psychological thing is of grabbing two instead of one. I mean, I only needed one jalapeno. I like dill pickles. I like, uh... Wow, you're going to put me on the spot here and try and remember things when I have such a horrible memory. Uh, examples of using a dill. Dill. Er, um. Yeah, I like pickles. <laughs> I don't mind dill with chicken either. It's not my typical thing, and it's not the typical thing I order, but I've had some really good dill chicken, dill poached chicken. Having uh, college flashbacks there, because it was one of the primary dishes they teach a, is a poached chick, chicken dish and skills. Oh wow, you have quite the garden. I only have one little raised bed. Um, four types of basil, three types of mint, heirloom and cherry tomatoes, green bell, garlic, nasturtiums. Uh, I always butcher that name, but I like those. Uh, dill, carrots, kale, watermelon, chives. Wow, 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 wow. <laughs> um, yeah, besides uh, the stuff I was complaining about earlier, I have chives, thyme, um, some poorly performing strawberry plants, uh, carrots. Uh, I used to have watermelon plants. I have two different pepper plants, and I have four different, uh, well, I have two different types of uh, tomatoes growing in four plants. I haven't done an update on my garden lately. I mean, the last time I took a photo of it on Instagram, it was just planning everything. Where I now have three, four foot tomato plants with tomatoes on them, but not 
ripe tomatoes. Nice. Yeah, I probably should get something going on inside here with the streaming and stuff. Um, I do have a uh, area to start plants, which is at actually right underneath the camera right there. It's, well, the camera's on a wire rack, and so it's, it's on like the second shelf and the camera's on like the fifth. Yeah, corn. Let's see, you got. You got the watermelon. You got peas. You could have gone for corn. Corn would have helped out stuff there. The whole, uh. I forget the term for it, the whole classical in Trinity. Or is it Trinity? Same as, uh. But where you grow the corn as the pole for the beans, and then you grow squash as a ground cover, and the three of them all work together. I honestly think that's the biggest problem with our agricultural system, is it's so much focus towards monocultures so that they can get a consistent product instead of operations that are probably not going to give you as pretty a operational, you know, can be processed by a machine, that's still a gorgeous tomato, but uh, that's not what they want for selling to the supermarkets and stuff like that, you know? Yeah, and corn's another one of those ones where it's almost, corn is actually almost better either grown by yourself with the pot ready boiling when you harvest it, or you might as well just buy it frozen. Okay, that's interesting. I've tried growing tomatoes upside down. They work pretty well for that, too. Um, I lived in the L.A. area uh, over a decade ago. I had, I set up a PVC, like, shelf rack with four different buckets and drilled holes in the bottom of the buckets, filled them with, with dirt and plant, plant uh, tomato plants upside down. And so the weight kept them down. Um, it works pretty well, although I wouldn't suggest paying any money. There's a whole bunch of different products that they have out there for growing tomatoes upside down. I wouldn't waste your money on those. Now I'm just now realizing that my captions are working because, um, I totally forgot to check those before I started the stream, so it's a good thing that they're working. Though I don't know that it's really closed, um, Pixel, which I use for my captions. Um, awesome dude, he's made so many changes and helped so many people with the transition from Mixer to Twitch, but, um... Yeah, it's... I don't know that it's closed captions, though, as, as he has on his thing. I think it's just captions.
because you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure closed captions means that I am doing the interpreting or my business or my organization um, is doing them. They're, they're closed. They're my operations. I don't know. I'm sort of a word junkie that way. I, I get annoyed by people misusing words. One of the ones I regularly get annoyed with is bisques. You have all these vegetarian bisques now. And if you look up the definition of bisque, shellfish. Yeah, Otter. It's sort of along the lines of what I was thinking. Um, still an absolutely awesome service that is great for helping anyone with uh, audio issues. But, uh, or if anyone just wants to hang out and not listen to me, but watch what I'm doing. Yeah, a lot of the vegan. I I don't understand the fascination with uh, well, I guess it's probably not the actual vegan culture. It's probably people trying to sell the vegans. Um, all of these products that are not what vegans want to eat or pretending to be what they don't want to eat. That was pretty poorly done cut in there, but oh well, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, I doubt I could handle a uh, vegan long term. Though I have been toying with the idea of going vegan for a week or maybe even for a month uh, for the right goal here on stream. Um, that said, I do have a lot of pork that I have to get through. I'm not a big uh, fish guy, but I could probably see myself going pescatarian if I had to. You know, world's meat supply ends. I am not going to be. <laughs> Yeah, I would most certainly miss bacon in any case. 
regardless of the fact that there's a gazillion fake bacons out there. They're fake. They may be tasty, but they're fake. Rinsing off and shaking off whatever water here on our cilantro. I'm going to be lazy about cutting the cilantro here. I'm not going to worry about getting the stems in here so much. And just keep it all bunched up. Twist it and turn it here until it's in a munch. And slice away. That'll be good for this project. No, I am not a part of the, that unfortunate percentage of people who believe cilantro tastes like soap. I, I enjoy the flavor of cilantro here and there. Um, it's not my favorite flavor at the same time, but I do think it is needed in salsa. I was going to grab some avocados, but uh, my only options for them were uh, a bulk bag, so I didn't grab any. Let's see, do I want to add the other tomato in there or save that for something else in the future here? I think I got enough salsa here for a couple of tacos and I got some tortilla chips hidden around here too, so I think I'll be good with that. So we got, oh, I need lime too. I have lime. Give that a nice, good roll here. Pull out everyone's favorite tool of mine. Here, Seven, this can go with your balloons, my, my juice reamer. If you're still lurking around. Good pico, fresh picos, delicious thing. See how everything's looking back here. This is getting a bit sticky. Gonna have to add a little bit more water to this situation here. Or beer, or. I did, well we've got onion, fresh onion and garlic in there. I've got some of my pork stock in there. There is
a pinch of, of cumin, uh, smoked paprika, pasillo ancho chili powder, uh, chili, uh, New Mexico chili powder, and uh, a little cayenne. And I haven't added salt, pepper, or MSG, but I do intend to here, actually, along with doing the, that with our salsa here, too. So, decent hit of salt. Yeah, it's sort of my go-to mix of things. I throw in a ton of stuff, though, too. Uh, add a good, good healthy pinch, pinch of salt here. Do that here for our beans, too. And we got Ahinomoto uh, MSG for Umami. Which, those who are unfamiliar with umami, it's sort of a hard, especially for a uh, Western palate, to figure out. But it's that sort of metallic flavor when, when you're eating meat that gives you that deeper savory flavor to things. Um, it's in just about everything these days. Uh, Doritos is loaded with MSG. Um, they just find ways to call it other things or use it from other sources. And there is a lot of fear against MSG, but it's essentially just a salt. Um, it's, it's not going to be, it's something that naturally occurs. It's something naturally in the body. So it's not something to be fearful of. The, all of the old past stuff is largely racist against uh, Asian culture and is based off of studies where they like put adult doses of MSG directly into the brain of rats. And literally, this is the studies that this is based off of. I use MSG quite a bit. <laughs> Actually, of the things that you probably won't see in this stream, another one you probably won't see on this stream is Nori. Um, there are seaweeds that I don't mind, but, uh, nori, I, I don't have any, thank you for the host chaos. Um, I don't have any problem with it. I'm not allergic to it. I just really don't like the flavor slash texture of it. I don't like that, like, leathery, uh, <laughs> no, I can live without it. For that same reason, I usually am not a big sushi nut. Um, it's basically that's the only real reason. So they like to put nori in fucking everything in sushi restaurants. I actually sort of like pickled ginger too, and you don't really find that outside. <laughs> you 
Yeah, and, and I mean, at the same time, someone serves it and says, hey, check this out, try the way I do it. When it comes to that, I'm going to give them a shot. Um, but just in general, yeah, restaurant has it on their menu. No, no thanks. Um, uh, we eat pepper and everything. We need more moisture in with our pork. It's a lot of tasty words, but, uh, yeah, I may have traveled to Asia, but language didn't stick. Nice. Um, two up here, we're going to leave you in the camera view. And come back to our dough over here. Still feeling a bit soft, but. We'll see. I've been working on it here since I started streaming, um, and getting better at it, but I'm still not great at it. So, roll these guys into individual balls. Um, I wouldn't be doing this if it was corn. Um, I honestly don't even really like corn. You're catching me on all the stuff that I don't... Ugh. I'm not a fan of fresh corn tortillas. Um, it may be a thing that I just haven't 
had fresh corn, fresh corn tortillas. Um, like they're buying cheap masa or something like that. But texture just generally just doesn't do it for me. And I, I like flour tortillas generally a lot more. But they are sweeter though too, so. Yep, and you have like, like I haven't had it from, there's places that I know of in New York and probably here in San Francisco, but I haven't researched it. But definitely in New York that are making their own masa. Um, and that would obviously be an entirely different animal. Yeah. Yeah, well, no time to hand mill or, uh, it's, I don't know the full process, but, uh, there's a lot more than just milling it to, to be involved there. There's, uh, as I remember, there's fermentation, there's, uh, proper care with the shells or something along that line. I don't, there's a lot to it. Actually, I might have actually had it and just totally forgotten the experience of the tortilla because I have had um, quesadillas made by what's his name, the famous uh, Mexican chef, uh, at least in TV world in New York. I'm forgetting his name though too. He's been on the edges of TV world for years and years and years. Yes, Aaron Sanchez. I went to his restaurant and met his grandmother. When I was in college and living in New York. That was a fun experience. He made us, uh, oh, I'm forgetting the name of the fungus that grows on corn, but a uh, quesadilla is made with that fungus along with like 12 other dishes. And his kitchen, his commercial kitchen for a probably 50 seat New York restaurant. It's probably the same size or smaller than my kitchen here. I mean, ridiculously small. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna put the meat on the back burner. Um, oh, someone asked me about my cast iron earlier. Um, that was a long time ago, but if you're still lurking around here, 
I have no idea with my cast iron. I bought my cast iron at a uh, flea market, all rusted out, and uh, cured them back up. There are names on them from the brand, but um, actually, this one isn't even readable, other than made in the USA. No, they're not, at least from my knowledge of Lodge, they aren't. I do have a Lodge pan. I bought their set here. I bought this set from Lodge that I've been using for making no need bread. It's pretty much the only thing I use it for. But that's a, that's actually a pretty good deal. I think that's like 40 bucks. Gives you two decent pans to cook with. Um, Lodge is decent. Um, some of these ones that are enamel, I don't necessarily trust as much. I think they're using cheaper uh, materials for their enamels. And I don't think they're as strong these days. But that's just, that's, I don't really have much to base that on. Um, Rhino Lion. <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't know the different brands well enough, especially what they're producing these days to give you a, uh, Um, I, I wouldn't, I probably would be just as good. So we got some decent smoke going here in the pan. Probably don't have enough to do all my tortillas with this. There ain't much left in here. So I'm going to use a little bit of spray of olive oil here. Get that first one going. And since we're making tortillas, I should get out the old school tortilla holder. Got the whole old restaurant tortilla holder, right? Yeah, La Crusette was sort of what I had in mind when I was one when I was saying. I think a lot of the enamel and stuff like that, they're using cheaper methods for it. I don't think they're as solid as they used to be. Um, I also like Teflon and I understand the environmental reasons why it's getting banned and hard to find, but most of the replacements they're having for it are junk. And I, I probably think a good cast iron is probably a lot of people's better option than, you know, greenware or whatever. Hey, Chaos. Welcome.
Yep. And that's the place to do it too, Otter. Um, especially because I, I honestly think the older stuff is better quality. Um, it's one of the major reasons I haven't bought myself a Cuisinart mixer. Uh, the older ones or the commercial ones are just so much better. You know, I, I don't want to spend $500 when I know I could spend 2000 on one that's just going to last me the rest of my life without question. And that tortilla is probably burnt. I forgot about it talking here. Yeah, I'm getting, getting a little toasty there. I think our beans are cooked here. I'm going to turn the heat off on those and just let them coast. A little bit more olive oil on the pan. Throw our second tortilla in there and hopefully I'll pay a little bit more attention to it. Love that feeling. You put your hand in the pan, you can feel your either what you're touching or your hand boiling. It's not so much fun when your hands boil. Yeah. I sort of skipped the last, I sort of fudged the last batch. Uh, I didn't roll them out into nice balls beforehand, as I remember. Thank you, Otter. Yeah, we got a little pan stickage going on there. I think I'm okay, though. More than stickage, we've got a sort of burnt crust going on the bottom of the pan there, while the rest of the pork seems to be unaffected by it. So.
Actually, I, I don't find that soaking pans helps too much. Um, the most I'll, I'll generally do is throw some water in and boil it, but if it's burnt on, you gotta do a little elbow work. Well, boiling um, salt water and lemon juice, absolutely. Um, but uh, same thing with griddles. You know, you, you pour water or you pour, pour soapy water on a griddle at the end of work at the end of the night, and you're scrubbing that thing while it's still steaming you in the face. Uh, same thing here, that, that boiling, that bubbling action, that helps break up things, that helps uh, get it out of the pan. On top of the fact that water likes to break things down. <laughs> That's exactly, yeah. Giving yourself a steam bath at the end of work. The steam bath is the nice job. The cleaning of the walks is the royal pain at the end of the night. Or the grill. No, they aren't. Turn this down a bit too much there. Fryers aren't that bad either. Um, worst job I think I've had doing cleaning wise was uh, um, trying to clean out underneath the pizza oven at a large fast casual restaurant. I uh, like space that no one could fit in underneath there. Hey, new guy, why don't you go vacuum underneath there? We got rodent issues. Is it the foods underneath there? No, it's probably the living space. Boiling out fryers. I don't know that I've actually boiled out one. Or needed to. Just always regularly clean, took them out and cleaned them. Uh, emptied the oil. Oh, I've seen some 
nasty ventilations too. There's a reason they catch on fire. Yep. Oh, I've... I got hired for a bar in Santa Monica. Uh, basically as someone to clean up their operation. Um, I wasn't hired there to actually work there long term. And yeah. Basically, let's just take a pressure cleaner to your entire kitchen line. And then let's take out your freezer and take out the bottom half of it that's just stacked up shit that's been there for six months and actually figure out what you actually have in your kitchen. I gave up on like the second or third day because they were ordering more shit and they had ordered stuff that after I had organized stuff it was obviously I already had like 20 of and it's sort of like why am I even here? That was part of my fun in LA. I didn't enjoy living in LA at all. I was in LA for three, four years. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And there's just as many who were successful with their first one and go to do their second one. And um, One of my jobs was for a dude that had a very successful uh, burger chain that wanted to do an upscale version of that. And it just fell apart. Um, he originally hired me. This was right out of college. He hired me as a sous chef instead of a chef. And then I ended up being the chef. And his input in the menu was, you know, we want this to be a fine dining restaurant, but we're going to have 20 burgers on the menu. It's sort of like... That whole thing was a shit show from being an end though. Yeah, I have no interest. Yeah. No, thank you. I don't know if you could pay me to live in LA these days. Hey, Kevin. Thank you for that raid. Welcome, everyone. We got some pork simmering back here. We got some beans cooking away that I got to cook some, cut some uh, ham hock meat for. I'm making up some tortilla shells here. We got a little bit of fresh salsa. How's everyone doing? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome.
Have a good stream tonight, Kev. <laughs> That's a good thing, Yanni. Yeah, that, that's where that goes. Drink a little bit more beer. Yeah, it's smelling like pork around here too. We got the hawk that I just finished uh, cooking here with the beans. I gotta chop that up here in a second after we get these tortillas finished up. Not quite there with that one. Roll out our last tortilla here move on with projects just using AP flour for the tortillas AP flour lard a little bit of water you can add a little bit of baking powder or something if you want it more bubbly but you can see how many bubbles I'm getting and I'm not even adding any. I mean, bubble, bubble, bubble. Yeah, I'm not the greatest at it, Cosmic, but I've been, I've been working on it. I was talking about that earlier, but I sort of like flour better. I don't know. But at the same time, I, don't, I was also telling people, I don't think I've had like someone making their own tortillas from their own masa you know, instead of, I've certainly had tortillas from people buying that giant bag of cheap masa, but making their own. I don't think I've had that. Um, so I'm, I'm more of a flour tortilla guy. But Pico, we got heirloom tomatoes, cilantro, red onion, jalapeno, salt, pepper, lime juice. Little MSG too. Keep lifting that up the container of uh, uh, tortillas up like I'm gonna throw it in there and not ready to. Okay, let's get rid of the flour. Let's start cleaning up a little bit. Um, get rid of the. Rolling pin quickly. Only got a little bit of flour on this, so I'm not too worried about it. I had some gorgeous heirloom tomatoes here on Wednesday, and uh, I chopped those up for BLTs. And this is a combination of scraps and a fresh tomato that I had sitting out here, so it's not all refrigerated tomato either. Um, and 
I haven't added any liquid to I added some lime juice, but that's all from the tomato. Our beans are looking nice and happy here too. We have our, this is a, a hawk that I bought that is smoked and cured. It's not off of the, the pork in my freezer. I got a couple hawks of my own now. But we're just going to quickly pull as much of this meat off of the bone here as possible. This has been stewing essentially since I started the stream so this has gotten an hour and a half or two hours of cooking here for anyone that's joining in here a bit later. Uh, so this has all been cooked and all the cartilage and all this is cooked and broken down to a certain degree. Biggest problem here is there's two small bones. This is obviously out of the uh, ham section of a pig. Things that I'm learning now. Um, I, I'm now learning that the ham section of a pig shank is the part that has two bones, whereas the four uh, hawk has only one. <laughs> um, well, shortly, about a week here before uh, Mixer bro broke down and decided to uh, break up with all of us by tweet, I actually broke down an entire pig here on stream minus the head and offal. And so, I have lots of pork around here right now. And so... Lots of yummy food around here, and I can smell tortilla burning. Yep, yay! Getting myself distracted here. Yeah, it lasted me out here, the last one here. I've done butchery. I haven't done a lot of large butchery. I've done a lot of breakdown of things for like hotels where they're buying large cuts and breaking them down into very traditional cuts. I haven't bought like half animals in my past, which is something I'm partially doing because of the current fine, uh, current isolation situation. Uh, it's partly a financial situation here in Northern California. Uh, and it was partly because that, that nice uh, uh, check from the government here allowed me to do it all at once. And so that, that's about a good quarter, good half of that government money went towards that new freezer between me and the camera that you're watching me from and that first pick.
Um, for me and myself, I mean, yeah, if I was doing a party or something, yeah, let's let's bring it on. But uh, I'm not gonna. All I've got for outdoor cooking basically is a small little forty dollar hibachi. Um, so, which I've done a few grilling streams, but uh, my fourth camera that I use for that, my uh, is a. Uh, old beaten up broken down cell phone that uh doesn't like life much and doesn't cooperate very much so and i forgot this one too wow great job jay we at least got a decent number here that are good that'll treat us well this guy's done for yeah those are all fine so we got one, two, three, four, five, six. We got six, maybe a seventh. Eh, this guy's pretty much done too. But we got six good tortillas there. Gonna throw all this lovely meat in with the uh, beans now. I was thinking of doing rice here and cleaning up, doing the last of the rice in the house here, but. I think this is going to be more than enough food for me here tonight. I think I'm going to skip the rice. Oops. Stove. Enough board. Stove. So I'll keep that guy, but that guy's probably going to end up being a little too stiff for what I want. Turn off this pan here. Now that, that is pork and beans to me. Okay, fine. Take pork off the heat here. Oops, finish our cleanup job here.
<coughs> Excuse me. Um. Run away. We gotta run away. <laughs> so yeah, a little build up on that pan. So we got our beef, or our pork. Not our beef, but our pork. Ah, I need to do a couple other things here for on the side. Let's find ourselves a little cabbage here. Uh, I just got cheddar around, but you got Mexican style cheese. More power to you. Uh, and I am going to try and save the rest of this cabbage here for uh, making stuffed cabbage. So I'm going to try and keep the leaves here nice. Although it's a little bit hard sometimes with these large outside ones on cabbage, sort of the center ones that are the real gems. While I'm thinking about it, uh, we got any F1 fans out there? All sorts of uh, Formula One news here in the last weekend or two. That'll probably do me enough here for a couple of tacos. I now have two knives dirty. Wow. I'm just making a pile of dishes tonight. I don't know what's with me. I'm normally pretty good about keeping clean and going just piling up tonight. <laughs> um, YouTube. Uh -huh. And I've actually switched. I don't have a... I used to do YouTube TV, and I used to watch a lot of Formula One using YouTube TV, but... YouTube TV has gotten so expensive. I mean, when I was using it, it was like 35 bucks. Now it's like, I think it's like 65. But uh, I actually switched, I actually figured out that I could buy myself a year subscription to 
the Red Wings, which I'm not going to do that this year, but uh, I could do that and a subscription to Formula One's web service, which gives you access to all of the radio from all of the cars and extra cameras and extra cool stuff like that. They got extra videos too. Uh, not a paid advertisement here. Um, and it was cheaper than buying cable for the year. And so I've completely ditched cable services now myself. Um, I actually first ditched cable like 10 years ago. And then it, it clawed its way back into me with, with cheap deals. And I've gotten rid of it again. I don't think a lot of people. Um, I don't think a lot of people do these days. Um, I mean, I, I'm to the point where I have a PC in my house, and obviously most streamers probably have a PC in their house, but I don't think most people have a PC in their house. Um, I think most people have switched from doing a, a, a central PC in their house to phones and tablets. <laughs> it's much more, people hate grate and cheese and they hate dealing with it. It's so much cheaper to buy blocks of cheese. Um, especially since you can safely just cut the mold off the outside. So if you leave a block of cheese around in your refrigerator for a month, you can just cut the sides off of it and grate it. Whereas if you've got grated cheese in your fridge, it's going in the trash. I've, I've done that before. I, I love me some Mimolette, but I hardly ever use Mimolette for anything. That was probably too much cheese, but... You can never have too much cheese. Let's use a plastic container to hold it. <laughs> so as usual, this is tacos not just for me for tonight, but for lunch tomorrow dinner tomorrow then all right so taco building time <laughs> Ooh, that guy's still nice and soft I don't mind a little crisp little burning flavor. Let's use those. Let's use that guy up there. And sort of nice. You, you leave them in this container here and it's it continues to steam them from their own heat. And so they stay nice and soft. Uh, if you do tortillas at home and you don't leave them in a, something like this where they can stay nice and steamed, um, 
you're probably going to have to hit them with a bit more heat or maybe even throw them in the microwave for 10 seconds just to loosen them up. Grab ourselves some of our pork meat. I'm just going to barehand it here. I'm not sure on prices, but 264 for cheese is pretty cheap regardless. Now let's pull up that one. That's a giant piece of fat. What's this side effect? Yeah, that's a rough one. I mean, just to imagine that you're reminding me of, uh, he's well over it these days, or at least I hope he is, but, uh, the chef who uh, started Alinea with uh, tongue cancer, you know, running top restaurant in the U.S. and can't taste anything. Oh yeah, there was there was all sorts of news and stuff about him doing that, him you know, doing chemo in the morning and running the restaurant at night. <laughs> All right, so we got tacos. ourselves a nice healthy bowl of beans here go with our tacos I love cooking shows. I, I watch other cooking streamers, uh, especially now that I'm here. I, I've been, when I gave up Twitch before, I just gave up Twitch. Um, but now that I'm back here, I'm enjoying watching a lot of the other culinary streamers, which I'm gonna hopefully share you guys with here, but a lot of them are earlier hours. And save up the rest of this cabbage here. Oops, get rid of that small piece of cheese. I did not. There were quite a few people that were before my time there on Mixer that I sort of came in for the tail, tail eight months in there. It sounds like Mixer, at least from my feeble understanding, um, had quite a, a number of creative cooking streamers uh, earlier on, and I think a lot of them were discouraged. Um, I sort of think I got a little resentment from people from coming in as a new guy and not really understanding that past going in there.
top off my beer here. Give ourselves a grab ourselves an Instagram photo. And we'll call it a night and find someone else to uh, post up here. Love this beer, by the way. I've, this is the only beer that I've drank in on stream, and I've only done it twice now since I've started streaming. I don't drink a lot of beer. I like me some tiny. Nice. Yeah, I did corned beef. Uh, I did bo I did corned beef and some other things. It just I didn't cure the corned beef, so it just looked so pale in my photos. I felt like that was it tasted great, but it looked horrible. <laughs> Let's throw the knife somewhere I can see it here. So we got photo for Instagrams and Discord and Twitter later. Uh, let's see who we can give some love to. Um, well, that's actually sort of the reason that I'm here in the first place, Ava. Um, I've been doing dinners like this for years, and I've been taking photos and stuff of that. And I realized about a year ago after getting hooked on watching other streamers that why don't I have cameras set up here? Because I don't want to do video editing. It's why I've never gotten into video. Um, I don't want to spend the time or the computer resources to bother the money on the computer resources to do that. Uh, and so I, it's just sort of a, duh, why don't you do that? Let's see here. Who do we have to say hello to? Why don't we say hello to Rhino? Rhino, I didn't realize it was that late. Awesome. So, I'd like to obviously thank you guys for joining me tonight. I will be back here on Sunday. Gonna be doing pancakes like we were talking earlier. At least if people weren't lying to me, I didn't look at the schedule. Schedule's down there in the cards. Uh, and so, uh, thank you all for joining me. I hope you have a lovely evening. I'm going to go enjoy this loveliness. And see you on Sunday. Oops. Didn't start the raid yet. <laughs> New to this whole mixer thing. Er. <laughs> New mixer thing. New, New Twitch thing. Thanks. Have a great night, everyone.
Hey, Kev. Hey, Chef's here with a with a raid. Don's here. For some weird reason. Probably sleep schedule related. to have you it's just it's like seeing uh, max it's like four in the morning or something for you <laughs> all right we'll try again next time Maggie Poo. Thanks for the follow. Welcome back, I think. Your name is familiar. Bray's pork is bork. Hi, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Get this camera in nice and close. And then not focus on the subject. Yeah. 